In this video, I'm going to guide you through all the essential liqueurs that you will need to make all of those big, famous rum cocktails. Whether you're working from Beach Bun Berries cocktail books, whether you're working for Martin Kate's Smuggler's Cove, whether you've gone straight to the OGs like Trader Fix and Don the Beach Combs recipes. All these liqueurs coming up will be liqueurs that you need. But does Chartreuse actually feature? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back, old rum friends. But to all you new people watching, hello, my name's Steve the Barman. And on my yellow channel, I've not quite got a yellow shirt yet, but I'm working on it. But on my yellow channel, I mainly focus on rum education and fun rum experiments. So if you like the sound of that, make sure you subscribe to this channel. But don't forget, I've also got five other YouTube channels, all with their own specific niches and topics. So if you want to check those out, go and look in the description below. Now, coming up, I'm going to run you very quickly through all the liqueurs that you're going to need to make all those big rum cocktails. And I've loosely broken them down into four categories. Now, I've, I've just been, you know, I haven't got the best names for these categories, but basically what I've got is essentials, almost essentials, a bit more in depth and the fun luxuries. And some of these categories might actually surprise you because to make most of the rum cocktails, you don't actually need that many liqueurs. So let's start diving in. So to dive into the very first category, the essentials, there is a grand total of two liqueurs. Now, if you think I'm missing any, please put them in the comments below. But I've been through all the cocktail books. I've been doing this quite a while and I promise you there's only really two essentials. But as I always say, this always depends on the cocktails that you want to make. If you, the best, the best piece of advice I can give you is to go through cocktail books, whether it's Beach Bun Berries Remix, whether it's Smuggler's Cove, you know, go through those cocktails, look at the one, the recipes that you like the look of, and then buy the ingredients to suit. Don't go stock in your bar with loads of different liqueurs to start off with. Look at the recipes that you want to make. That will be your big starting point. But the very first two, and the two out and out non-negotiables for making rum cocktails are these two. Now, I'm not necessarily saying you have to buy these brands, although when it comes to rum cocktails, these two brands go pretty much hand in hand. We know the Mai Tai is all about Pierre Frond dry orange curacao. It is. And then when it comes to Falernum, yes, there are other brands of Falernum on the market, but this is pretty much the be all and end all globally available. Both of these products are globally available, you know, and they are the big hitters. Yes, I've got Bitter Truth Golden Falernum from uh, Germany, essentially. That's out there. I've got various Falernum syrups that I use from time to time. I do love the ODK and the Monin Falernum syrups. But when it comes to the two big liqueurs, that feature, it is all about these. You could go down the route of a Grand Marnier, a, a Compagnero Orange, what's the other one? A Clément Shrub, things like that. Even a triple sec of that. But do you know what? When it comes down to it, and yes, I've dabbled with a four orange blend, a four orange liqueur blend for my size. I always come back to the Pierre Fran dry orange curacao. So they are my non-negotiables. They are the only two essentials that I think you need. Now, the next category, I've called it almost essentials because, again, it depends on the type of cocktails that you want to make. These don't feature as heavy as what these two do, but they do feature quite a lot. So the first one we're going for is the Campari. Again, this is a love-hate ingredient. Many people hate it. I am not a huge Campari lover in its own right, but that 10 to 15 mil in certain cocktails, especially like the Jungle Bird, is where this comes into its own. So a bottle like this will last a hell of a long time. But, you know, when you go further into rum cocktail, into tiki cocktail world, I definitely think the Campari is a must buy. Then the next one in this category would be a an out and out vibrant cherry liqueur. There are multiple cherry liqueurs on the market. You know, he cherry hearing, or as I got pulled up recently, it should be hearing cherry, but I call it, it's, it's just easy to call it cherry hearing. We all know what we mean by that. We've got cherry hearing liqueur. We've got various other cherry liqueurs on there. Cherry, a cherry brandy, essentially. That's kind of what you want. Again, not massively, it like it's not, out there in a lot of cocktails, but when you start going down Tiki World, it is there a little bit. So I would put a cherry brandy, a cherry liqueur into the mix. 
Now, still while we're on cherry liqueurs, again, you know, it's not a one job does all because you wouldn't put that, for instance, in a Hemingway daiquiri. You need a maraschino or a maraschino, however you want to say it, which again is a cher it's another cherry liqueur, but they are just very, very different. These are, it's a cherry brandy, essentially, and that's just, you know, it's maraschino. It's a different type of cherry liqueur. Very, very different. Colorless, essentially, big, bold, thick, rich cherry. That's what you've got there. But you kind of do, depending on what cocktails you need, you do kind of need maraschino and a cherry brandy. And then the last one in the almost essentials is a coffee liqueur. I've spoken on various other channels. I've spoken about coffee liqueurs quite a lot. I've used them. I fluctuate. This is my coffee liqueur of choice at the moment, a Luna. But for most of you, you'll go in one of two directions. You'll go in Mr. Black for an unsweetened, proper, vibrant coffee liqueur or you're going Kahlua and Tia Maria. For the, the weaker, you know, they are 16, 17% ABV compared to 25 ABV, you know, that the better coffee liqueurs are the stronger ones for coffee flavor. That's just the simple fact. So essentially you've got two choices, a choice to make, whether you go Mr. Black or, uh, or Conquer if you're in the UK, or you go the likes of Kahlua and Tia Maria vast majority of you will go Kahlua and Tia Maria, but when you do go a bit more in depth and you kind of want more rich and robust coffee flavors without those sweetness, with a bit more punch, you're definitely not going, you know, you're putting Kahlua Tia Maria to one side and you are essentially going Mr. Black. But if you get this, I highly recommend this. Now the third category I've literally called a bit more in depth. And that's where when you start, you know, you go beyond your basic tiki cocktails. This is where this lot starts to come out. So the very first one we've forgotten, I've forgotten, there we go. The very first one I've mentioned is Liquor 43. Doesn't actually come out to play that much, but essentially a vanilla liqueur might get mentioned from time to time. Essentially what Liquor 43 is, is 43 herbs and spices, but a big overriding flavor is vanilla. There are various different ways you could go for this. You could go Galliano. Remember the two types of Galli, well, there's loads of different types of Galliano, but the big one people always mistake is that actually L'Authentico with the white kind of cap around the top is kind of your, you know, your equivalent to this, whereas the one with the purple cap around the top is an out and out more vanilla forward liqueur. So actually that Galliano with the purple rim around the top, I would actually compare, and I'm not even sure it's behind the bar, so I'll just get one of these out. I would compare to like Giffard, for instance, Giffard Vanilla. There's plenty of other brands that do out and out vanilla liqueurs. So that purple Galliano is kind of relatable to that, whereas the white Galliano is relatable to Liquor 43. The next one it gets called for quite a lot would be like a perno or an anise, an absinthe kind of vibe. I don't actually use that much. So for me, I, I can be patriotic here. I can actually go to Cornwall in the UK and get Tarquin's pastis. Now pastis, or perno is a pastis essentially. That's what it is. Because I don't use much, you know, Tarquin's, Cotton Don to this, they do half bottles, which is perfect. I've, I'm almost down now. I'm at a quarter of a bottle and I've had this for a good couple of years. When you use this in cocktails, you literally have a bar spoon here or there, five mil at the most. And it goes in your like your herb sink, your bitters, where you would sort of do a bit of this with Angostura bitters. So, you know, you don't need that much of it, but there isn't an alternative really. There isn't any kind of anise bitters out there that I know of. So, you do need this, and this is where Tarquins in the UK does come into its own because you get half bottles. And then the final one I would put in this category is kind of like a, a mishmash, if you like. I'm going to say pimento dram, but I would also kind of include like um, an Amaro in here as well, especially things like this, the Angostura de Amaro. Now, they are very different. Pimento dram is pimento, you know, that spice, berry kind of vibe. But, you know, the Angostura bitters, if you know what Angostura bitters are, this is a liqueur version of that. I'm not saying you go out and buy this Amaro. There are plenty of other Amaros on the market. But, you know, they kind of, they are different, but they would sort of do the same job, just putting different riffs on. So probably I would go towards the, the Pimento Dram for your cocktails like the Nui Nui, for instance. But, you know, riffing up, Something like this in the new and new instead of the pimento dram would actually be a great alternative. So as it stands, these are the core liqueurs that you will need. You do not need to buy any of the others. And to be honest, 
unless you, when you get more, until you get more involved, you don't even need to buy these. Now, until we get into the final category, which I've called fun luxuries, I just want to touch on the Chartreuse a minute. You know, I've had various bottles over the, of this over the years, including the yellow one. And do you know what? It's an absolutely delicious liqueur. It really is. Don't be put off by this at all. It's got a lovely herbal, fruity sweetness to it. It's absolutely delicious. But when it comes to rum cocktails, it doesn't really feature. Even in the Chartreuse swizzle, you know, you don't really make it with rum. It is Chartreuse at the base of it. So, Yes, a Chartreuse Swizzle would be a tiki cocktail in that vibe. You know, we probably would classify as that. But when it comes to making out-and-out -out rum cocktails, this doesn't really feature. But if you've got the cash to splash, I would get a bottle of the green one when it's in stock. If it, when it comes in stock, wherever you are, I would grab a bottle, much more than the yellow. The yellow is fantastic as well. It is one of those liqueurs that... Once you start drinking it, you will have a use for, but when it comes to reading recipes and making cocktails from recipes, very rarely features. So let's move on to that final category, what I've called fun luxuries. This will be more modern rum cocktails, more modern tiki cocktails. This will be you putting your own riffs on different cocktails. For instance, the first one I'm going to get out, and I've got two here because I've, I've finished that. I haven't quite restocked that because I've still got a bottle of that. And you know what? Look, Le Giffard is a better apricot liqueur. It is. But the, the modern one, you know, is fantastic. Go down the lights. Play with your, you know, your cheaper Giffard. I would always urge you towards things like Edmund Briertet, or Briertet, whatever you want to call it, uh, to Joseph Cartron, to, um, the, what's the other one, Gabriel Boudier, and uh, posh chiffard over your bowls and decipers because they are essent they are without a doubt better better liqueurs but you know what this morning one is fantastic as well it's all trial and error for you you know until you it, i would only i would only recommend you going down an apricot liqueur route after you've got use if you're just starting out look your bowls your decipers is going to be fantastic it's only once you start playing with cocktails and you want to make that cocktail better is when you start upgrading your liqueurs. For me, I'm a firm believer in the Apricot de Roussillon. I, I absolutely adore that stuff. And that, in a riff in a Mai Tai, superb. Now the next one, actually, you know, depending on what cocktails you make, actually would feature maybe higher up the order. But again, you know, in old school tiki recipes, it doesn't really feature because, all right, let's get it out. It's a coconut liqueur and you would actually have coconut puree or coconut cream of coconut so again some of those old school recipes don't actually call for a coconut liqueur the new school do and this for me is i fell in love with this about 18 months ago and i haven't looked back a third bottle of this maybe now i i adore this stuff it is you know if you compare this to a malibu for instance there is absolutely zero comparison i've had kalani which i really really like as well uh, mahini uh, I've forgotten it was, and um, Clément do, a, um, so the Martinique do their own coconut one again, which is fantastic. But I always come back to this bounty. It is cheap as chips, all right, a little bit more expensive than Malibu, but oh my God, does it deliver. So if you're making cocktails with a coconut liqueur, definitely, hands down. Now I'm going to come on to a ginger liqueur again. You know, I, I've always got it. But it's minimal use. It is minimal use. And I would actually, these days, probably more uh, towards the side of ginger bitters. I've got Bob's uh, ginger bitters here somewhere. Those ones. You know, I've, so I've got a ginger bitters. So I don't necessarily want a ginger liqueur. But I do love adding ginger, especially to my own riffs. I do love adding a ginger vibe to that. So again, you know, you've got King's Ginger. I'm not sure if the other one, I've completely mind blown of what the other one is at the moment. Uh, no, it's completely gone. But, you know, again, this served me well. This is still the higher ABV version. They've completely reformulated and made it a lower ABV. But for a lot of you, ginger riffs on cocktails, fantastic. But I've just gone down the ginger bitters route. But then this is my business. So I've got a lot of different ingredients here. 
Now, a liqueur that I do actually use a lot more than the ginger is my piment, at the piment. And again, this is G5, and I absolutely adore this. You only need five or 10 mil of this. This is like a chili liqueur, really does bring the heat. I have got a bottle of Ancho Reyes uh, on the way. Um, it's sort of loosely a working relationship with Master Mole. That'll be loosely in the way within the next sort of month, two months or so. I don't need it, it's not urgent. But I do love sort of that five, 10 mil of this in various different cocktails. Again, a 70 CL like this will last you an eternity, an eternity because if you add 15 to 20 mil of this in cocktails, it's just gonna burn and completely destroy it. Five mil is all you need. So this would be perfect in half, you know, half bottles, but I would actually probably put it ahead of a ginger liqueur at this point. But for me, probably up there with the apricot is, uh, is actually a honey liqueur. I, I fluctuate between honey, depending on the recipes, between a honey syrup, which I use a hell of a lot of, and a honey liqueur. Uh, and this is a British scratch rum in the UK. It's their own rum that they flavoured up with local honey to them. But and I know there's not a, a from my mind, a, a, a global brand of honey liqueur. It's definitely, I'm, I'm guessing there's something available in the US and something available in Europe. But, you know, depending on the recipe, depending on the direction, I would not be without a honey liqueur now. Um, I, I just love it. It's different riffs on cocktails. Now this, I have classed as a fun luxury, but does actually probably go up the spectrum a little bit because of cocktails like the Rum Runner. And this is a blackberry liqueur. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say Chambord doesn't do this job. I don't use Chambord. I don't like Chambord. Chambord for me is just, wishy-washy when it comes to this. And many people think because of the color, Chambord is a blackberry liqueur. It's not, it's a black raspberry liqueur. And that's the big difference. These are blackberry. Now, the Giffard, um, Frambois de Rance, uh, it has gone through, I, I think it's still listed, but it has gone through a, through, a thing, through a thing in the UK where it's sort of been, become quite rare. And I don't know whether that's because the berries, they've had a bad crop, a bad season. And they, so essentially these are um, a, a, a mix of um, the Logan berries. So essentially a mix of blackberries and raspberries, but it do give you a lovely vibrant note to it. So actually what I've used in the past three, four, five months, it's more of a creme de mure. I go through this a lot because of cocktail masterclasses. I've always got three or four bottles of this on hand, but you know, side by side, uh, you know, sorry, not Loganberry, Tayberry. Tay, that's what kind of it. Tayberry is a Scottish berry, and it's a, a cross between a blackberry and a raspberry. So, you know, if you can get the Frambois de Rance, I would urge you to try it because once you go that, you will never go back to Chambord ever. But actually, for stuff like the Rum Runner and stuff like that, where you need that, your creme de mure is superb. Now, a lot of you will be thinking, well, hang on a minute, when's the banana liqueur coming out? Surely banana liqueur has to feature, and it does, but again, more modern cocktails. When you go back through the old tiki recipes, it's very rarely ever called for. It is a modern twist because a lot of the Jamaican rums have that banana vibe to them. So banana liqueur is not heavily called for unless you do modern rum and tiki cocktails. But for me, as I say, because it's a business, because this is what I do, I'm never without a banana liqueur. And I actually, oh, probably out of all of these here, this is probably the one I go through the most out of this category. So I do use banana quite a lot, but then I do riffs a lot of banana Mai Tai, banana daiquiri and that kind of thing. So if you go down that route, then yes, a banana liqueur is superb. And I would actually have a banana liqueur instead of a banana syrup. There are just two more to talk about really. The first one is a cacao. Um, you know, I've this is a recent one. I've also got this here actually as well. I'll, I'll bring this out, Zante. Um, but I got both at the same time for a cocktail that I was kind of developing pre-Christmas in kind of late October, early November time for Christmas. Um, and I love this. The Zante is actually a pear liqueur with chocolate running through it. Whereas the Tempest Fugit Cacao is actually a chocolate liqueur, quite thick, quite syrupy, but with plenty of vanilla running through it as well. There are various different cacaos, various different chocolate liqueurs on the market. Again, it's not a it's not a liqueur that's called for a lot, but you know it's it's there, and I use it quite a lot when I'm creating my own because I love that style. I love this thing, but you know it's a luxury. Don't think of it as a necessity. It is definitely a hundred percent a luxury item. And you know what? There are many, many other liqueurs down here as well. I've got Sue's and Aperol that I haven't talked about. They would firmly fit 
it, the alternative is Campari, but for me, it's the Campari, the extra bitterness that does the job. I've got the Bianco Bitter here as well, which again is a white version of um, the Campari. Again, it gives you that bitterness and kind of, I prefer that to Suze, if I'm being brutally honest. I don't really don't rate the Suze. So again, you know, you've got so many different, like strawberry, I've got passion fruit, I've got mango, I've got raspberry, I've got watermelon down there. Elderflower, they, they, they're just really, really lu big luxuries. They are not necessities by any stretch of the imagination. But the last one I'm going to pull out is this. And again, it's like modern cocktails. You've got your blue, your blue Hawaiians, your, um, what's the other one? Blue Hawaii, blue Hawaiians, blue lagoons, that kind of thing. It's, you know, essentially it's an orange liqueur, a dialed back orange liqueur with blue food coloring. That's all it really is, but it does give you fun blue riffs on cocktails. So, you know, a lot of people will have this in the collection, but the, you know, I've had this bottle now for eight, nine months and I haven't even opened it. I've got another blue um, Curacao up there somewhere. Again, I don't really use it unless I'm making those sort of, those fun tiki, uh, not even tropical cocktails, that's the word. So that's my luxuries. If I've missed anything, if I've got any glaring errors, make sure you comment below and let me know what you think I should have included.